Arrakis is a third world planet in the Galactic Empire. Exploited by everyone in the universe for its spice. Despite the harsh conditions of the planet and its ruthless colonizers, Arrakis produced the strongest militia in the Empire. With a bit of economic education, they can overcome their colonial past and turn their planet into a green paradise. And all that without a jihad that kills 60 billion people and without anybody turning into a worm. Once the Fremen control Spice, they are more powerful than the Emperor, the Bene Gesserit, Chome, and the Spacing Guild. They can invest into their economy and infrastructure to create the wealthy and green Arrakis they always dreamed of. And much more. But the path there is not easy. And the books themselves take a very different direction. So we have to start with the basics. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Spice is the cocaine oil of the future. Everybody wants it, everybody needs it. The entire galactic trade economy relies on spice to use faster than light travel. Amazon delivery drivers absorb spice into their body until their prescience is developed enough to calculate the perfect route through the universe without ramming into planets, stars or black holes. Without spice, intergalactic trade would become unaffordable. Most planets would be cut off from the rest of the universe and the empire would collapse. Each planet would have to become completely self-sufficient and these days we know how hard that is once you are dependent on cheap labor from the other side of the planet. The special abilities that the Bene Gesserit have also only exist because of spice consumption. Without it, they could not continue their politics schemes and intergalactic breeding program. For ordinary people, spice triples life expectancy, boosts vitality and heightens awareness. Of the three trillion humans living all over the empire, the richest billions are addicted to spice. But spice withdrawal is fatal. Without spice, most of the rich, smart and powerful people would vanish. Therefore, whoever controls spice controls the universe. The only known place where spice can be found is Arrakis, a desert planet with a highly religious population specialized in close combat and water conservation. Once the importance of spice was understood, the planet was colonized by the Corino Empire. As the Fremen did not have a unified centralized government, but lived in patriarchal tribes spread over the rock formations of Arrakis, it was easy for the Empire to occupy the planet and expropriate its spice. The colonizers settled down in the northern parts of the planet and developed urban areas such as Arakeen, where off-worlders and traders supplied the locals with imported water in exchange for spice. Factories for spice harvesting were built, which required a large workforce. But as more Fremen moved into the cities, they could be exploited for cheap labor and eventually replaced most off-world labor. While the Emperor was the self-proclaimed ruler of Arrakis, he used other great houses to maintain the planet and its spice production. The Emperor was smart to never use his own forces to rule over Arrakis, as it would be a severe extension of his power. Instead, he could plot the houses against each other, as he successfully did with the Harkonnen and the Atreides, while still getting wealthy from their spice harvesting. It worked well for centuries, but every system has its flaws. And this one had so many, it's a miracle that the Fremen were religious enough to not break the spice economy before their messiah arrived. All great houses of the Landsrat combined have about the same military power as the Emperor. But because there are conflicts between the houses, there is no chance that they could confront or take him down. 
and for interplanetary transport, the Spacing Guild is needed. Which means that they have the final say on any military transport. The Houses obey the Emperor because it is necessary for their survival. Leto Atreides obeyed and went to Arrakis, knowing that it is a trap, but with hope that he could still unite the Great Houses. House Atreides had become the favorite among the Houses, but once gone, the Landsraad would lose its momentum to challenge the Emperor. And the Emperor could direct his attention to the most important issue in the galaxy, diversification. It is important for every nation to not be economically dependent on one supplier, trade partner or planet. Without local production of essential goods, your nation stumbles during a crisis and will get exploited by foreign investors, companies and governments. The simplest example are subsidies for farmers. If you ensure that there is enough farmland in your country and your farmers are doing well, you will always have a local production of food. Even if the farmers can compete internationally, the risk of not having any local production is worth it. Without local production, you can be extorted for your basic needs. What before was an ordinary trade for food now becomes a matter of life and death. And depending on how desperate you are, you will sell your land and resources or sign unfair trade agreements. The Empire has no diversified spice production. The one resource that the entire progress of civilization builds upon is found on only one planet. And to make matters worse, its population wants to terraform it into a green paradise, making spice even more rare. Only 3% of Arrakis' surface needs to be terraformed to tip the ecosystem towards a green paradise. The Fremen's water collection in large underground reservoirs is essential in making the terraforming successful. Maybe this is also the reason why the Emperor assigned the Harkonnen as the ruler of Arrakis. The Harkonnen do not invest into the local infrastructure or build relationships with the locals. Their only intention is to extort as much resources as possible and kill everyone that opposes them. If they keep suppressing the Fremen, the Fremen will never have their green paradise. Dune's political and economic system is a sharp regression of what we have today. The trias politica of our world, which prevent the concentration of power, are combined as a single entity in the Emperor. Different worldviews and criticism of the establishment are not protected by law, making human rights de facto non-existent. By serving the Emperor or a Duke, you rise in the caste system and gain privileges, protection and support that covers your basic human needs. But even those can be taken away at any moment, should you step out of line or make mistakes. And the economic system is not better either. All interplanetary trade is monopolized through one single corporation. Its major stakeholders profit from the dividends Space Amazon makes and are therefore even more exposed to disruptions in spice harvesting. Regulations that protect workers, industries and the ecology only exist on rich planets. Everywhere else, profit matters regardless of the human suffering or ecologic destruction. With these political and economic structures, it becomes completely understandable why Arrakis was colonized and exploited. And it makes even more sense that the Fremen want to terraform their planet as fast as possible. Although outnumbered by sheer military force, the Fremen still manage to disturb their colonizers and preserve their culture. As they know where the spice comes from and how to harvest it, they establish their own trade relations with the Spacing Guild. In exchange for a regular supply of spice, the Spacing Guild will keep the southern parts of the planet clear of satellites that could expose the secrets of the Fremen. Mainly their transportation on worms and their sophisticated farming that supplies millions of people in the south with food. The Fremen developed wind traps that collect moisture from the air, allowing them to grow vegetables, nuts and fruits and have a cattle industry that produces a variety of milk products. The outside world knows very little of how advanced Fremen technology is. 
but with proper investment, its innovations could spread beyond Arrakis. An independently controlled Arrakis by the Fremen would lead to more spice harvesting in the long term, as the population directly profits from it, greater innovation with various spice-related products, and the starting point to diversify the spice economy. By properly understanding how to terraform other planets for spice production, and how to create spice synthetically by analyzing its chemical properties. I felt a great disturbance in the force. As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror. Give a Fremen water and you feed him for a day. Teach a Fremen the basics of interplanetary politics, industrialization, and comparative advantage, and he will rule the Empire within your lifetime. The Fremen already trade with the Spacing Guild and can sustain themselves without imports from other planets. If they disrupt Harkonnen spice production, while increasing trade volume with the Spacing Guild, they can force the Emperor's hand without causing a Jihad. They can demand the complete removal of Harkonnen forces and Arrakis to be recognized as an independent planet ruled by the Fremen. The first act of the new government will be a trade agreement with the Empire. In exchange for steady and increasing spice exports that will stabilize the galactic economy, the Empire will not occupy or interfere with the politics of Arrakis. The Fremen will nationalize the spice production and only the government will be allowed to trade spice. With the profits, the Fremen government will import advanced technology and human capital to build up Arrakis's infrastructure and industry. Besides its own industries, Arrakis will build an extensive social welfare system with its spice money free education and healthcare for all Fremen, and generous distribution of food, water, and shelter to eradicate poverty. The spice money also has to be used to expand the military capabilities of Arrakis. The Fremen have a home advantage against invaders, but once their cities and industries develop, their dependence on them becomes a weakness. The history of the Empire tells us that you should never trust the Emperor. Even if he signed trade agreements and intergalactic peace treaties, as long as his power is challenged, he is a threat. The Fremen have to create a long-term plan that weakens the Emperor. Either slowly, by making him more irrelevant, the wealthier Arrakis gets, or by making him completely dependent on Arrakis' exports. The monopoly on space navigation by the Spacing Guild is another issue the Fremen have to find a solution for. It can cause a trade war or real war if they refuse to transport goods. The Fremen have to develop their own form of space navigation or break up the Spacing Guild and leak their secrets to allow everyone to travel. Intergalactic war with the Empire is also an option, but rather straightforward and unnecessarily resource-intensive. And after all, trade is war too. Back on Arrakis, the population will urbanize and large areas of desert will be terraformed into forests, grasslands, cities, and arable land. The Fremen will introduce off-world high-yield crops, which will increase food security and independence. And with its advanced industries, living standards will keep rising. Hello. I haven't once mentioned Paul more deep in this. Well, just because you are enlightened doesn't mean that you are smart. Paul is so scared to follow the golden path and become a worm that he rather kills 60 billion people in a jihad. There are smarter people in the universe than Paul. And based on how his prescient abilities only show him a very narrow sight of the future, he could have asked them first. <laughs> <laughs> 